everybody. Welcome to the Good Evening Kitties podcast, a Tales from the Crypt review. My name is Melissa, your ghostess with the mostess, and today's episode is season four, episode five, Beauty Rest. This episode's pretty fun. Let's get into it. As always, John Kassir does the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and Danny Elfman does the theme song. This episode aired July 11th, 1992. It is directed by Stephen Hopkins, who also directed the movie Predator 2. The screenplay is by Donald Longtooth, who also wrote the screenplay for a previous episode I'd mentioned, um, season four, episode one, None But the Lonely Heart. This episode stars Mimi Rogers from movies like Lost in Space, Jennifer Rubin from movies like The Crush, Kathy Ireland from movies like Mom and Dad Save the World, and Buck Henry from movies like Grumpy Old Men. The description on the back of the box here is, She'd kill for the part, twice, but it's not acting talent that counts for this role, it's inner beauty. So again, this episode is season four, episode five, Beauty Rest. Let's do this. So this episode opens up as the Crypt Keeper is working out. He's got a little skull bandana on and he's doing push-ups. He's getting fit amongst the Crypt. There's lots of candles. He says he's doing some jumping hacks. So this episode opens up <laughs> with Mimi Rogers. She plays a woman named Helen. She's doing this commercial where there's like all this um, like ethereal light. And she's like turning around and she's talking about like different things with women's bodies. It may be a man's world. But that doesn't mean I have to take it lying down. Because I want to compete. Whether I'm a CEO or an MD or an MRS, I want to be taken seriously. Very seriously. That's why I never feel fully dressed until I put on Ball Buster. It's not for just any woman. It's for the woman who means business. And what she's doing is a commercial for a perfume called Ball Buster. About, I guess it's like an empowering for women perfume. And I, it just makes me laugh. It's like, it looks so serious. And then all of a sudden she's like, Ball Buster perfume. And you're like, all right. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's pretty good. She's she's doing the, um like a test run for it. And even the, the Ball Buster spray perfume has like these two chains of like these teardrop things hanging off of them, I guess like balls, I don't know. It, she's doing like a take for it. So then they'll take that recording and then look at it later for the audition. That ends and then it cuts back to where you can see all the people doing the production of the commercial. And the producer or like the director of it is saying she did a great job. She did great, she's probably got the part. She's definitely got the part, it's gonna be fine. And she's super excited, she's like, good. She's been trying to get roles and she's having a hard time getting parts and she's just been doing a lot of auditions and she's not getting it. So shortly after it cuts to, she's in the office of her agent and her agent is on the phone on a headset and he's basically like telling her that he, she's, she didn't get the job. And there's like this Evian water uh, product placement there. It's huge. It's this huge like half liter bottle of Evian water she pulls out of her purse. And she just sets it on the table with the label pointing towards the camera. I'm like, okay. So she's drinking the Evian and she's there and he's talking to other clients why he's trying to talk to her. And he's like, I'm sorry, they went another way with the part. You didn't get it. She's pulling out cigarettes. She's freaking out. She's like, this is ridiculous. So she's like, so who got it? Who got the part? And he immediately gets scared. He's like, um, he tells her Joyce got the part. Joyce is her roommate played by Kathy Ireland. And she's like, are you freaking serious? And she has this great line here about how Joyce got the part. Your roommate Joyce got the part, okay? Now don't go blowing this thing out of proportion. I mean, what can I tell you? I mean, she impressed the director. Oh, what happened? Did her orgasm show some acting ability? And it's just, it's pretty good. And she's super mad and it, she plays this really well. I liked her in this episode. She's good at just being flustered and upset. She lost the part. She's so mad. So she goes back to her house or to her, her flat or to her apartment. And she's like all mad and she's like throwing her coat off and she's grabbing rice cakes because it's the 90s and she has to keep fit. And she's eating her rice cakes and going off on, on Joyce. And she's like, I can't believe this, you know, and she's all mad. And Joyce has no, oh my gosh, there's a lot of rice cakes in that thing. I didn't see. They pulled it open and it's nothing but just rice cakes of packs, like packs of rice cakes. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. Yeah. Even she's like, why the hell do I eat this shit? And I'm like, I don't know. Not all rice cakes are bad, but there's a lot of them in there. And so now she's going for the ice cream. She's like, I don't even care anymore. And I love this part that she's doing because she's so, she's so mad. She's just like, I feel so sick about all this. And Kathy Ireland is just like, what? And... 
she is kind of oblivious to to what's going on and she's doesn't understand why helen's upset and then she's like oh i got the part joyce had no idea she got the part yet helen's like are you freaking kidding me like this is what i've been depending on is this part and you got this amongst other stuff and you don't even know and she's like i don't understand why you're so happy why were you so happy before and joyce is like well i got this letter what the hell are you so goddamn happy about well, you know this guy I've been seeing for the past couple of weeks, Tom? Well, he's in charge of this beauty pageant. It's for some trade show or something. And, well, he's gonna make me the winner. See, he gave me this note and... <laughs> uh, uh, it makes me sick. It makes me so sick. Helen, it's not what you're thinking. I really like this guy. Is that what it says in the note? No. No, the note's for the guy who's emceeing the pageant. Some guy named George. I don't talk to me. Joyce, don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me! If I go and do this beauty pageant thing, I can win. And she's not really sure, like, what the prize is, but she's already got it in the bag that she's gonna win. So she has this note for the guy who's emceeing the pageant. His name is George. And it's this beauty pageant. Yeah, she's just so mad. <laughs> Helen's going from like rice cake to ice cream to pizza. She's like donuts. Get out of my face, girl. I'm going to get fat. So she's just super mad. And so Kathy Ireland's character, Joyce, has been getting all these parts. She didn't know she got Ballbuster. She's super excited about it. But yeah, there's this beauty pageant. She thinks she's got the role to win. Helen's character is super upset. She runs off to the bathroom. And she's just like, she's it's ridiculous she she runs into the bathroom she's like oh no she runs in and then she opens up the medicine cabinet and it's like everything in the medicine cabinet falls out like it was already like set for that everything comes tumbling forward everything's fallen into the sink and then she notices this bottle called um there's this bottle called doze off tranquilizers and it's huge a big bottle i mean it's it's pretty decently sized and she's trying to open it with her teeth i guess she's gonna go to sleep is what she's planning on doing she's like i don't want to feel anymore First of all, I'm like, why does she have this giant bottle of tranquilizers? It'd be different if it was like a sleeping pill, but it says like doze off tranquilizers. And then there's a little skull and crossbones and it says like, don't mix with alcohol or something. I'm like, what is this? Why does she have this here? And so she decides to give some to Joyce. She's going to give some to Joyce and then she can go to this beauty pageant instead. So she sets up this, these cups of tea and some cookies and she heads into Joyce's room. And Kathy Ireland's in there in like her undergarments. She's getting ready. She's got like, she's got the model body. I believe Kathy Ireland did, she did quite a bit of modeling. So she's there. She's putting her, her necklace on. She's getting ready to go out to this beauty pageant. And Helen's like, hey girl, sorry, I'm a bitch. And here's some tea or whatever. I'm sorry I got jealous and upset. And so Kathy Ireland's character is drinking the tea. And so they stand up and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive you, hug, hug. And they're making up as friends, right? And so she goes, she's hugging her and she's like putting the necklace on her and stuff. So Helen asks her, she's like, what are you getting in this beauty pageant? Like, I don't understand. Is it money or? And Joyce is like, well, starting to explain it. She's like, I think it's, and before she can really say what it is. So she's not even like sure what the prize is going to be. She knows that they get to be like some spokesperson for the company but that's about it. She don't know anything about what the company's for or anything. So th this episode's a little weird because it, it is a little vague on like how these women get into this beauty pageant that I'll explain more later. But it's just like, it's like, well, somehow you're going to be a spokesperson for something. All right. No one really seems to know, but she knows she's got it in the bag to win. And so she's putting on her dress and she's starting to feel like a little like woozy. And then she just like passes out. And Mimi Rogers' character is like, yeah, she's like all excited. She's getting the letter out of this bag, getting the address. And she's like, sweet dreams, you little tramp. And so she thinks, she thinks she was just knocking her out. Kathy Ireland just laying there with her mouth half open and her eyes open. And she looks, she looks pretty gone. And so Mimi Rogers is like, what? And goes over to like, just make sure. Cause she's just hanging off the bed. Like she looks dead. And she goes over to check and then she finds out she killed her. And she's like, I didn't mean to kill her. And I'm like, how did you not mean to kill her? You gave her tranquilizers that have a skull and crossbones on it. Don't be dead. Please don't be dead. This, this is not my fault. I'm not going to jail for you. You don't deserve it. I'd rather kill myself. 
and she's freaking out for a little while, not even that long. And she gets over it pretty quickly. She's like, oh no, I killed her. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> she's in there and she's like bashing her chest in, like, get up. So instead, she decides to write or type out a suicide note so it can look like Joyce killed herself so she can get away with all this. It's basically like, I'm too depressed to go on living, all this stuff, my life's been going downhill, blah, blah, blah. And leaves it next to her phone, which is a pair of lips. Remember those guys, those phones that look like lips? So she wipes off the bottle of the pills and puts it in her hand, even though she touched her hand. She kind of gets real smart on this. She like takes this and she, she wipes the bottle off and puts it in her hand, even though she touched the hand. But then she takes like some water stuff and like makes it look like her tears were running through her mascara. It hides a lot of ev evidence that she can. She puts on this cute red dress and gets her hair all did. And she's like, okay, she got over it real quick. She's like, oh, I killed her. Oops. And then she leaves. So she shows up at this, it's kind of scary looking. It's where they're going to do this beauty pageant, but it's like real dark. It's a studio building thing and there's a security guard and she walks in and she's like, hey, I'm looking for George. Um, this is the guy that, who sent the letter and was like, hey, this chick's going to win. There's all these other women there. They're getting ready. This other woman, I believe, is Jennifer Rubin. I don't know. Her character is kind of weird because she's just there. She's immediately on to Mimi Rogers' character, like, that she can tell something's, like, maybe set up to where she's going to win. And there's a lot of slut shaming in this episode. Like, a lot of, like, oh, you slut, you whore, slut, 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 like, all this stuff. I didn't catch what her name is. But Jennifer Rubin's character is talking to this guy, talking to George. He's explaining that there's interviews and things like this and the beauty pageant. And it's real just, it just looks dark in here. It doesn't look like an open pageant, but it's, it's nighttime. So maybe, maybe it's just, I don't know. Something about this does not seem right to me from the get-go. And so Helen takes the letter over to George that says about the winning or whatever. Because the, the letter says like, hey, you should let this chick win from Tom. And so she gives it to George and George is like, Tom gave you this? And she's like, uh-huh, because she's pretending to be Joyce. And he just kind of laughs and he's like, well, if that's what Tom wants, I guess I can work with that. And she's like, cool, cool. And so as they're talking about that, Jennifer Rubin's character can overhear that, that everything is going to be set up. So that's why she gets on to, to Helen, because now she knows this is all going to be a setup and she wants to win. Because George is saying now that everyone knows or now that he knows who's going to win, the crew can get set up and we can do this grand finale much quicker. George is real excited about that. Uh, so Helen heads into her dressing room again, real dark and dingy. Heads into this dressing room and she's like getting her makeup going and everything. Jennifer Rubin's character walks in with this really cute dress. The, the fringe on the dress ain't that great, but the rest of it's real cute. And she's there and she's like, I know what you're doing. I think it's gross. You slutting around. Because she thinks automatically that, that Helen is sleeping her way to the top, which is what Helen thought about Joyce. Hi, you must be in my next door neighbor. I want you to know that I know what you're doing and I think it's disgusting. What? Not that this contest is a big deal to me, but even if it was, I wouldn't stoop to your level. I wouldn't fuck some stranger just to get a break. Up yours. I don't know what you're talking about. I know you slept with Tom so you could win this thing. Look, it's not what you think. <sighs> I bet it's worse than what I think. It's probably unsafe sex. Who the hell are you to come in here and give me this shit? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just leaving. And so they get in a fight. Jennifer Rubin's character has these great earrings that are like these big silver X's that come off her, ear her ears. I'm like, geez, they you could like throw it into the wall like a ninja star. George is coming in and breaking up their fight. And automatically, Jennifer Rubin's character is like, you know what? Two can play at this game. George is like, hey, let me get this outfit going so we can see it in the light since you're going to win. And then she's like, this part's funny because she's like, um, George, when I become the company spokesmodel, what am I selling? And then he's like, well, more than anything else, you'll be selling yourself who you are inside. And I'm like, oh, no. And she's just like, that's really poetic. And I'm like, that's suspicious. You're going to be selling yourself. I'd be like. Mm, that's not a product. They you really got to get more stuff in writing, people. This whole episode, once she gets to this place, you definitely can feel a little bit of attention that something's not right. None of the women can tell, I think, and I don't, I don't know how bright they all are. There's something going on. So now we're starting the beauty pageant. So all these women are out there, and they're all dressed up, and they're getting asked questions, and they have the weirdest, some of the weirdest questions, because the questions are like, what would you do for your last day on Earth? 
And so George is hosting it, and then he brings out Helen to do her questions. Tell us then, Helen, in your life, what is the one thing you feel most guilty about doing, and why did you do it? <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> what, what makes you think I'm guilty? I mean, after all, we've, we've all done bad things in our lives, haven't we, George? But I have no regrets, because no matter what, I've been true to myself. And after all, it's what's inside that counts. Right? Good answer, Helen. Everyone in the audience is like, ha, 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 It's a lot of these rich people sitting out there, and they're all dressed fancy, probably had dinner. And it, it definitely gives you a sense of, like, maybe they're betting on something, or they've bought into this. It almost reminds me of The Purge, the second one, I think, where it's like all these people were paying to, to hurt people and all that. It definitely seemed like it was something, like a charity event for something wrong. Again, it's still pretty dark. They're just, like, one spotlight. And so now all the women leave the stage. The question, like in the formal wear, is done. So everyone's going to go change for the finale. So as everyone's leaving, George pulls Helen in back into her dressing room. And he's like, you know what? We got to talk. This note doesn't exist. And he starts ripping it up. He's like, it never existed. And she's like, wait, what? I thought I was supposed to win. Apparently that other woman's name might be Drusilla. Drusilla? I don't know. That sounds very Cinderella to me. But Drusilla, or whoever this woman's name is, Jennifer Rubin's character, is now in her dressing room getting ready. And this part's pretty fun. Uh, Helen comes in and she's got like, she's got like a cloth, I don't know, some tights or something. She's gonna kill her. And she's got these, she's all dressed up and she just walks in and she's like, How does it feel to be a whore? And a hypocrite? Hypocrite. I'm impressed. That's a big word for a little slut like I'm you. I'm a slut? That's the pot calling the kettle black, don't you think? You fucked him to win the contest, didn't you? Yeah, you could say that. You should have seen the look on George's face when I told him I was gonna sue his ass off. Sue him? For sexual harassment. I told him I'd call the police, call the newspapers. You know, this business of sleeping with someone to win a contest is bullshit. And so what happens is she, she's like, well, why... Why is everything changing? Like she's she's like, did you have sex with with George or Tom or whatever to win the contest? Drusella's like, no. I mean, she's like, you could say that, um, but I'm blackmailing him. So what she's doing is she's like, she wants to. She made him stop the fact that Helen was going to win by blackmailing him and suing him for sexual harassment sexual harassment and sleeping with I guess Helen I don't know or just any other woman that he might be sleeping with because she wants this to be a fair race Helen's really mad now because she's like I was supposed to win I'm gonna sell myself or whatever this product is and so she rushes I guess Drusilla I think that's her name and starts choking her out she's like I'm this kind of girl yeah and she just like chokes her out and throws her head onto the makeup table whatever she's in front of and she's dead and she's just like facing the camera with her eyes open. And so Helen leaves and sits back down now in a different outfit. And she's finishing getting herself ready. She's kind of like trying to control herself. So they're like, where'd Drusilla go? And she's like, oh, she left. And they're like, what do you mean she left? And she's like, I don't know. I was just talking to her. And then she changed her mind and she left. And it's like at this point, the, the way that they're fighting, it's like almost like Helen would much rather be known as a murderer than as a slut. So then George is like, are you still interested in winning? And she's like, of course I am. And so I don't know if it's because now that she's more guilty because of that one question earlier about what she'd be guilty about because now she's definitely murdered and they know it and now she's more redeeming for this. It just seems like there's some sort of qualifications you have to hit in order to win this contest. I don't think they just do this to anybody. They kind of pull back to where I think it's Drusilla's body and she's kind of up against the wall dead. It's just real shady and they're in these dark corridors in some building. And they pull her into this, it's supposed to be where she's going to get like her makeup and everything done, I guess, or something. I don't know. They, she's not suspicious. I would totally be as soon as she gets here. She gets pulled into this dark room. And there's a man there who looks like he's going to give her a tattoo. And she goes to lay on the, I don't know, it's like a chair that lays back. Like you're going to get your makeup done. But it almost looks like you're really going to get a tattoo. It's real dark. There's these men there. And I'm like, what kind of makeup dungeon is this? Like what is happening? I immediately would be suspicious. This guy's smoking a cigarette above her with, he's like straddling her and feeling on her face. And she's like, wait, what? Like, 
Now she's starting to get suspicious. I'd be like, I wouldn't even have walked in that room. She's like, cool, she's got a good bone structure. And she's like, all right, th thank you. And then he starts like putting the makeup on her and George is over on the side and he's like kind of, this guy Rudy who's doing the makeup is like making all these marks on him. And George is like kind of watching her and she's getting frustrated. She's like, how can I model? And he's like, I wouldn't worry about that. And George is bringing this glowing like syringe of blue liquid over. And that's when she starts to freak out. And so these other guys grab her and hold her down. And now she's scared. I'm like, I think I would have been scared long ago. And so he injects her with this stuff. And he's like, you're going to look just fine. And just injects it. Uh, not sure where. It looks like maybe in her side. And so then she screams and it cuts back and pulls away from the, the makeup dungeon or whatever. So now it cuts back to the stage. George is out there. He's singing a song about how beauty is just skin deep. Here she is, a picture of race. Two vacant blue eyes in an ashen white face. Though she seems kinda stiff as an ex-human being, how far she will go remains to be seen. She's charming. She couldn't be nicer. What a pleasure. It was to slice her. She's magnificent, every ounce. Cause it's what's inside that counts. How exciting it is to suture a beauty without any future. She's magnificent, every ounce. Cause it's what's in. That Getting all up in this song. And as he's singing this song to the people at their, at their tables, and in the background as the curtains are pulling away, you have Helen, and she's, she's upright, and she's got her arms behind her head, and all these blankets are like drapes or draped around her body, and you can't see anything else. But she's up against the wall and there's all these lights on her. Everyone's excited. And then that's when they pull back the drapes. And above the sign, or above her is this sign that says Miss Autopsy 1992. It's got Mimi Rogers character, Helen. She's still got her arms up. It's showing the rest of her body. And now it's, kind of, it's pretty gross. Her chest is completely open. You can see all her organs. It's kind of like Hellraiser. They have the skin like pulled all the way back down and pinned down like you would if you were like dissecting like a frog or something and she has won Miss Autopsy 1992. Again, I think some of it has to do with rules about how bad of a person you might be, but they do a nice close-up. They got like the lungs and the, the abs and stuff and some ribs and stuff and the skin looks pretty gross and they got her like all wrapped up in a white dress and everyone's clapping and cheering and, and she won. So she's Miss Autopsy 1992. This was a beauty contest to preserve her as beauty. Um, I guess that's what he meant by selling herself and everyone's real excited. It's a weird episode. I didn't remember this one super well. And as I went on, I knew something was going to be a weird twist. I couldn't think of what it was, but I was like, I know something, I can feel it. Something's not good. And so they just shoot back to Helen and her eyes are completely open and she's dead and she won, which I guess would have been Joyce's cross the bear either way. I'm not sure how this all works. They don't really go into it. It doesn't really matter. But that's the end of the episode. And so it cuts back to the Crib Keeper. He's still working out. Now he's got, he's lifting some weights holding, they're made of two bones and two skulls. And he's he's lifting it up like a barbell or like, yeah, like a barbell. And he's he's doing reps. He's doing some reps. And he's just throwing out those puns. <laughs> Crypt Keeper, you're so punny. And the best Crypt Keeper pun is... Hello, kitties. What's the new? <laughs> I was just in the middle of my deadly dozen. First I do a few pull-ups, then a few jumping hacks, and then I like to finish with a little die impact aerobics. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, get it? What scene new? Oh, that's a good one. And you got the jumping hacks, die impact aerobics. Love it. So that's the end of the episode. That's the end of season four, episode five, Beauty Rest. There's no trivia for this episode. The next episode is season four, episode six, What's Cooking? 
Thank you guys so much for downloading and listening to this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, feel free to go over to iTunes or Facebook and leave a five-star review. That really helps me out. I really enjoy reading them and, and hearing about how many people I'm reaching and just uh, I have a good time doing this and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Uh, if you want, you can follow my Twitter at Gek Podcast. That's at G-E-K Podcast. There's also a Facebook page. You can find me on Spotify. You can find, you know, whatever. Just, I'm everywhere. So again, thank you guys so much for listening and have a good one. I just had quite a scare. I actually thought my heart was...